Hello guys, so welcome back. Uh, yesterday I wasn't able to record a video because I was busy doing something, so I, I didn't have enough time to um, record a session, but today will be another hour, and yeah, I think we were doing the we were messing with the autoplay, if I remember correctly, and that would be located here in the game status, and we could just enable it, which we did, so let's see how that is. Let's see how it works again. Wait, did it just go through it? What the heck? It just went through the the, bo the block. It's kind of weird. Unless my eyes didn't see that. Let's see if we can finish the level. That's what I want. Because I know it was having errors or issues uh, in a previous video. Uh, oh wait, I can press spacebar, right? Dude, I speed it up. There you go. Alright, yeah, what the heck, it just went through. Come on. Oh, nice. Gonna beat all my level. I'm just gonna allow this to play, continue playing until it, game overs. This is not what I expected the level to be, but dang, it's so slow now. <laughs> I'm holding spacebar, by the way. So this is two times speed. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Yeah, I think that's one thing we got to work on. Somehow, like, yeah, oh, he's gonna get stuck. <laughs> what? All right, well, that's an issue. I'm not, I'm not sure how to fix that. Um, I'm guessing maybe add increase the random factor of the the is it the ball random factor. I uh, go to script. Let's make that two. I guess speed it up a bit. Man. Let, me, let me try it again. Oops. So now, t today, um, we're gonna see, or actually we'll, we'll keep going, and then if we finish this up, we're going to try out my that idea that I had with the close-up and the zoom. So he's just continuing from where we last left off. Of trying to include the autoplay feature
Alright, so we, we're given a challenge to um, basically factor this out. We want to, because this is very, uh, he, he mentioned something about being CPU uh, expensive. So, because, you know, it will have to search through all of the, the hierarchy, right? Even the child of the hierarchy. So it can get really expensive in that sense. Um, so we need to cache a reference to this so it, it doesn't use too much memory. So in order to do that, we need to go to game status, the, the script, and we're just gonna create a reference variable to to store it in. So in our we don't have that here, so we can just create it right now. Um, so we have config parameters. That's what I remember. State variables, which describe the current, I guess, like actual properties of the the class. Um, so we have cached reference. We get games. Wait. Is this the right? No, no, no. Sorry, this is uh, we're in the wrong one. <laughs> uh, we're supposed to be in the paddle, right? There you go. Um, so these are config primes. We need uh, cached references. And then, oops. So we got game status. M game sense, I guess. And then in the start, we're just gonna equals find object type game status. M game status. And then we're also gonna get ball and ball. And then M ball to find object type ball and ball so this is use cache reference uh, this is this is used to prevent the over Expensive call to locate the object in the hierarchy. In hierarchy. In the, hi in the hierarchy. Um, so yeah, it's not just like a small bug, I guess.
Alright, so my question is, why does it, why, why does mine move when his doesn't, you know? Like, it's already going to the right, even though the ball isn't moving. So then, yeah, I think that has something to do with my, my ball, and then maybe the, the rigid body moving currently. We know, but I, I made it so that it stays static until you like, until you click on it. So it shouldn't really move. I'm gonna check out the position of the ball, which is over here. Wait, I shouldn't. Look at the position of the ball. Oh, now it slows down. Why is the x-axis changing from the ball? That doesn't quite make sense. Yeah, because this is the ball, right? Not really changing the ball's position. So maybe it has something to do with the ball script, maybe? Um, so paddle to ball vector. I think it might be the speed up ball, maybe? Let me, let me, let me check. Could that be the issue? So we can probably do that. We'll put those. Because we don't want them to speed up the ball when the game hasn't started yet. Um, so then lock ball to paddle, paddle position, so position, paddle pause. Plus the paddle to ball vector. Paddle to ball vector is the transform dot position minus the paddle one dot transform dot position. Let's find the difference. I think it has something to do with this line of code right here. Position of the paddle pause plus the paddle to ball vector. I'm thinking it's calculating while we're here. Um, I'm not sure if this will break it or not, but it's worth trying to see if that's the actual issue here. That's weird. So let me take game status off. That make oh I think because it won't follow it, right? Yeah, alright. So it has something to do with this line of code, I guess. Um I guess the because the pal's pause position shouldn't be changing. So it has to be the paddle to ball vector. Oh, it's constantly adding. If not, has started. Because then... Right, because in the beginning, it's... Oh, I see. I see, I see the logic here. Um, weird. He, he should have the same code too, right? But his stays the same. So what the issue is that since it hasn't been started, you know, update and update keeps get uh, looping. Um, it's always going to call this method, and it's always going to keep adding this vector to it. Actually, no, it shouldn't, because this is not plus equal. It's just keep assigning this value. It's weird. Because like, let's say you know, pal, pause plus the paddle to ball vector um, like if uh, because we're just assigning the value we're not really incrementing it uh, if we wanted to increment it we would do something like 
then transform transform dot position plus everything else but or you know plus equals but that's not the case here we're just assign we're always just reassigning this value here then how is it affecting let me take this out let me try this let's say still yeah it still stays still but we still gotta add that offset to make sure that the ball appears to be on top of the pedal which is why we did the this pedal to ball vector um, I'm just gonna print it out or debug dot log um, pedal to ball vector Compiler issues, I probably forgot the semicolon, and of course, I did. Right. Yeah, it's 0 0.5. 0 0.5. So I'm guessing this value adds 0 0.5 each time. 0. That's weird. Maybe we need to also print out the position because like it was kind of hard to read. Debug. Log position. Uh, X equals the transform. Transform dot position dot X. Because that's the one that changes. I hope this prints. Hopefully. Uh, semicolon. Dang. We're really getting used to Python syntax. Right, let's, let's let's check it out. Wait till it hits fifteen point zero two. All right, now let's go see the difference here. So we started off at eleven, and then add point two, point four, point. So it's always adding by zero point two. Where's the 0 0.2 coming from? Is it this red? Oh, the random factor. Wait, could it be? No way. I don't think so. Oh, this is a ball. Never mind. I'm looking at the right one. Oh, no, I am looking at the right one. Um, so we're adding this random factor. Where am I doing that, actually? Uh... Oh, and the collision. But that's only for collision. Right? Random. Yeah, plus the... So we're only adding to it... In the... Maybe I need to set this in the beginning. Still adding 0 0.2. Where's that coming from? Where's the 0 0.2 coming from? It has to be before, but pal to ball vector, you know, it's only 0 0.5. So it can't be adding that, considering it would be going by 11.5. 11 and 12 and then 12.5 and 12 and 13 but it's not doing that it's adding 0 0.2 huh. it works when we take this out I know it's also 
you know, reading this. But it only does this if we click on the left click. So this doesn't affect, it shouldn't be affecting the X position of the ball. Um, it should only be affecting really this, this method here, considering that's the only one being called. Let me see something actually. So we're not gonna, you know, enable, enable it. We're going to just see this. Look at the ball's position. Yeah, it's not moving when I have it assigned here. So I guess let me look at the autoplay again. Maybe something's wrong with the autoplay. I'm not considering. It might have to do something with the, the fact that I did kind of deviate from whatever he was doing so we got a little paddle um, so we have get x position right and then if it's autoplay then we get the position of the ball we just update the position of the paddle to the ball and the paddle is 10.98 oh I see it. so you see the 0 0.2 right here that's where the 0 0.2 came from. It's not exactly 11, so let's. He's gonna make the ball 11.2, right? Oh no! That's kind of weird. But now I think it should work. So it shouldn't move now. Or let me auto play it first. Um, but now it shouldn't move. There it is. So yeah, it's because the paddle was placed differently. Dang, I thought it would update at least to that position, or at least I thought you know by changing the position of the paddle, the ball gets updated as well. But I guess not. I guess in the beginning it doesn't really matter. So you really gotta align it, unless there's a like you really have to align that I guess before you run the game. Huh. I wonder if that's going to work in the other levels too. I might have to give it a go. Um, but first let's remove the, the print statements considering we don't need them anymore. Or the log. Um, and then, um, and save that a go. So then launch the ball. Do, 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 do. Uh, all right, let's go launch the other levels just to see if um, if it does. In fact, we do need to edit it. Let's go level two. Look at the paddle. Yeah, so let's go change that. We'll make it. Should wait. All oh, right, right. Oh, this is actually performing a lot better than the last one. It's performing way better. Wait, did the ball just leave? Alright, I don't know if that's a glitch or anything, or maybe I had... Wait, how's that even possible? The loose collider should be, you know, thick enough to... Ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it just zoomed past through. Because I, I did remember seeing, I do remember seeing, like, the ball going through the blocks. So, yeah. Uh, whatever. It's fine, I guess.
so he's he's mentioning the importance of playtesting is so that you can find you know logical errors in your game and possible bugs too so it's always good to play test your game as much as you can just so you can just see any potential bugs or logical errors like I said and you know maybe write them down so you can work on them later on or at that moment Make levels and upload. I kind of already made the levels, so I think I'll be fine. Um, probably just upload it, upload what I have right now. And actually, no, I'm not gonna upload it yet. I will try to attempt. Actually, no, I think to be safe, because I might break it. I will submit it and then um, try to upload it again next time. But it does take a while to upload, so I don't know. I might do it off screen actually. If anything, I'll make a copy of it. I'm gonna kind of skim through it because you know he's just level designing and then he's also just gonna upload it which we kind of did in our previous game uh, with the the text-based adventure game so I'm just gonna speed it up a bit
Well, I actually see that. So these are all the people that made their stuff. Oh look, look at this one. You encroacheth upon the sacred mushroom. Oh yeah, this is pretty good. Like the font too. actually pretty pretty clever um, then there's all so these 3d 3d games jungle smash is this the text based adventure game oh no this is wait what someone actually made this with the That's impressive, holy crow. But there's no background music, but it's kind of slow too. Cool. Nameless story. So this is the text adventure based game that I, I, I made kind of. Let's see how his is, how other people's are, I guess. Uh. Welcome, you are here. That's one of the ships. Hmm. I guess I need a numpad for this. Can't click on. Yeah, I can't play this unfortunately. And a grotto. Alright, so yeah, but I'm not gonna upload it yet because it's gonna take a while and I do plan on doing another 30 minute session. What was that? What did I saw? It's a block breaker original. Oh, so it's so yeah. I'm gonna take the quiz, and then after that, I'm gonna try to implement my own feature, and also I'm gonna generate more levels, trying to make it more. Cool, 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 cool. Um, so I'm gonna take the, this quiz first, and then I'm gonna do that. All right. So let's see. Which keyword allows us to access the property of an array that tells us how many items are in the array? Um, in the array, we have length, which is a property that it has. What is the reason that could be causing this error with random, as seen in the screenshot? Oh yeah, because um, so here you can see two squiggly lines underneath the random um, that's because um, I didn't know about this but unity has their own random class and here it's getting confused between whether to use unity's random class or the the, the default library so we gotta yeah there's a conflict so we have namespace conflict whereby two namespaces are we are using contain reference to random um, random should be random. Nope. It should always be capitalized if it's an object. Uh, lines 58 are not allowed to be separated. No, you can you can do that. Um, and yeah. Which of the following is a good example of extreme 
tuning, changing our ball speed from 10 units per second to 15 units per second. Instead of using one ball in our game, we use two. The player has three lives in the game, so that's a feature, you know, because we didn't have that originally. Our paddle is only one pixel wide. That one is possible. We can tune it because we can just change the paddle size. But and then change our speed ball speed I mean we can also do that too so that's why I'm kind of confused that is tuning we're not really adding anything we're just altering it or tuning it rather um, to make it feel different instead of using one ball in our game we use two again we're not really adding since it is we're just duplicating but I guess cons technically we are adding actually never mind so this might not be the answer it's either this one or this one but I'm leading more towards this one because yeah the paddle you know decreasing the size of it is just changing the length so yeah cool uh, when tuning your game you should always tune it to match your player experience graphic card maximum settings no then no one will be able to play it um, oh, and I wouldn't be able to play it either considering my graphics card isn't really that that uh, that good uh, own personal playing style I mean if it's a game for myself then yeah but usually we want to you know um, what's the word like serve the player right match of what veggie wallpaper well my, uh, my wallpaper is white so it's like pretty blank and I don't think anyone would ever play a game like that. <laughs> Why would we create an autoplay system for a game that automatically moves the paddle for us? For when the player gets bored with our game and don't want to move the paddle themselves anymore. <laughs> I hope not. To allow for easy and fast test wait no easy and fast play testing. Yeah, I think it's this one. To ensure that our game is not winnable by playing anything other than AI. That would suck. For world domination. Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, see results. 5 out of 5. Cool. Alright, so. Block paper wrap up. So I'm, I'm going to do this. And then, before I watch the Hangout talk, I'm going to try to attempt to do my feature, I guess. And then, you know, make make the levels easier because I know like some of them are kind of over overdone I guess All right, change. I might maybe create custom blocks. So before we do that, right, um, we're actually gonna 
start implementing that feature that I had. Uh, so we got to go to our test level, which only has a block, right? So what is it that I want to do? Well, well, if it's the last block, so we have our kind of condition here. Um, so I guess um, so our condition is that there is only one block left. All right. Um, so what happens when it does? So then the action, I guess, we have one uh, block. Last block gets a um, a circle collider. 2D of radius length x that is a, a that is a trigger event and then when the ball collides with that collider then you want to dynamically change the camera to the ball's position essentially right you also you, know, you also want to slow down the, ball, the game speed when um, it does trigger as well so I'm just gonna put this on the side just so I can kind of refer to it while I'm coding so we need the ball class um, wait 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 I got, I got an error what is this argument set active scene okay, let me try it again I didn't really change anything did I? oh that was weird Yeah, we're gonna definitely change the levels for that, but so we got the ball. We don't need a paddle, it doesn't seem like it. Um, we got the level, so we need the game status. We also need to refer to the game camera, which is fine. We got a level script. Because we can get the number of breakable blocks left, so let's. Yeah, I think we would need to change everything here. So let's try to create a getter method to get the number of breakable blocks left. Um, so we do. I uh, don't know what happened here. Why is it so? Why is it like this? <laughs> the indentation is kind of off. All right. Public or public int get breakable block count and then we're just returning breakable blocks so I'm going to put a comment used to check if there is only one block left so pretty much we're done with this class because all we needed was to check if there's only one block left wait save save all right, cool. So now we just gotta mess with these, because um, we got we, we gotta make sure to get the position of the mouse right. Um, oh wait, do, do don't we need to also? Let me get a cache reference. I don't know. Would it? You know what? You know, I'm just a beginner. I'm just gonna, you know, brute force my solutions. So we're just gonna cache reference. Um, we're gonna have block, last block, m last block. So should hold the last block object. So then if it's awake, um, update I guess so if um, 
we have a level reference? No, we don't. So let's go ahead and do that. So level, um, M level. Used to get the number of breakable blocks left in the. We can do it in start, it doesn't really matter. M level. Right, level isn't part of the game status. I wonder why. Why shouldn't level be part of the game status? Probably because we do need to restart it. Alright. So that might cause some issues. I'm gonna comment that. So, note, I think this might cause some issues. Because, so this might cause some issues because um, if it gets destroyed, right? Um, it's gonna have like we're gonna have the same issue where we try to destroy the game status, but then it destroys it later. So we still have reference to the new game status, but you know that that doesn't really exist anymore because we do delete it at the end of the the cycle. But we'll see. Maybe I might be wrong. So and we'll find object type level. I'm hoping there's only one. So. We get the access to the level, right? So then we're gonna check if m dot level um, dot get breakable block count is less than or equal to one. Now I'm just making sure that you know what? No, it has to be one. It has to be one. If there's only one block left, then. Um, M last block equals find object of type block. So it should and we'll say if M last block does not equal to no. Just so that we're not constantly adding this, because I do know, um, because we were ref we, we were talking about it in the in the last uh, video where it says that this method call will be very expensive over time, so we would we wouldn't want that to keep calling. So by having this check here or this condition, it'll only call it once because m last block should be null at the beginning, but then if we notice that there's only one left. Then we add this value into it, so therefore it won't be null anymore. So this will be false, and then we only call this one time. All right, cool. So actually, we gotta also, you know, this is where add the circle lighter to the to the block. Let's go search how to do that. To no, it's not to an object during runtime. During runtime. But it should say this is deprecated. Yeah, it's obsolete. Magic. Oh, so it, we can still do that. You just gotta. So, um, I guess m last block dot add component. It would be circle collider. 
too deep. Will that work? Let me, let me see if it compiles. Um, so block does not contain add component. So we add a reference to the game object. Um, let's see, game object, maybe? That be the solution. So yeah, all right. Let's load it and then see the. Does it have a circle collider? It does not. So that failed. Wait, is it lagging a little bit? Let me just check. Speed it up. So weird. Um, I guess we gotta start debugging now. Um, so, uh, what should we debug? So, this should find the level. It should get this level object here, and then it should load the script. Let me just check. So, it should have one. So, um, let me see if this. If this is even loads, right? So let's debug and say break the blocks equals one. So yeah, so it does work. So now we're in here. Cool. We're just going to carry this along. We're going to load it again. Wait, it's always calling it, which is weird. Oh no, maybe it didn't compile. Yeah, it didn't compile. My bad. Alright, um, let's see. We should only call it once. Yeah, it doesn't call it. Oh, my bad. I think it's supposed to be equals null. <laughs> alright, alright, my bad. So let's see, does it work now? Oh, it doesn't. But it does load it, right? It has reference to that object, which is this. Uh, I wonder if we can debug the last block. Unless there's no string method um, or string um, Oh, I need a semicolon. So let's run it again. So it does have reference to um, um, wait unbreakable block one three block wait 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 what? Why is it adding it here? What the heck? All oh, right, it's not the only one. Oh, I see. So I did add the component, which is nice, but um, yeah, we want to add it here. But how do we? All right, how do we search up? I wonder if we can find like a tag because it is last one technically. So 
find object with tag. Find objects with tag. Can I find object with tag? Oh, all right. Maybe you can do that. With tag. Maybe just a single object. And we don't have any... I don't want to hard code it, but for now, um, I'm just testing here, so... Let's see, hopefully that works. Doesn't exist. Um, find game object with tag. Find game object with tag. Find with tag. That's probably a lot better. Find with tag. Alright, cool, cool, cool. Let's see if it works now. Does not exist in the current context. Do I need to apply a class or a namespace? Yeah, it says the game object. Wait, 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 what? How do we do this? So we have a game object. Oh, we need to do the actual, like, reference the class game object. What does it return? It returns a game object. Cannot be type block. <sighs> so I'm thinking we just call this game object. So now that game object will be our block, and we just gotta do this now, I guess. We just remove the game object because we're referring to the last game object that has the breakable tag which has got to be this one, so I should solve it. Alright, cool. So when we hit play, nice, so it has it now, cool. But it doesn't have it, so I can't really debug it. Again. Oh, actually, no, it's right here. I can actually debug it. Oh, no, no, no. Pause. Alright, cool. So now, as you can see, this, we got the proximity, so that's, that's good. So now we just got to increase it so that, you know, it's, you know, doable so I'm guessing like maybe and last block dot get component circle collider and then we have to change the radius I guess so let's look at circle Collider 2D Unity. So let's see the methods that we can do to kind of set the um, the uh, I guess we have to do transform, right? The radius. Oh, never mind. We gotta do the radius. So what would be a good radius? So a radius, let's say three. No, too big. Two. I think two might be a good one. One point five. 1.5, yeah, I think 1.5 is actually pretty good. So we're gonna go with that. We're gonna go with 1.5. So dot radius equals 1.5 f, I think. So we're gonna launch it. Let's see. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So when it. Wait, 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 wait. What? Uh, oh yeah, we gotta change it to an ish trigger event. Did it really bounce off there? Oh, it did. <laughs> uh, object reference not a sense of instance. Forty-eight. I'm worried about it. Oh god. Right. Uh, we got yeah. So there is an issue with that. We gotta figure it out. Um, but before we do that, um, let's see. We, we might have to do. Um, we might have to, you know, work on that later or tomorrow since it's it is. I only have two minutes left, so we can say same thing. Um, except this one is trigger. Then let's see. 
so let's run that. It's trigger, cool. So then we hit it. So now we have that. We also need um, a reference to the. Oh yeah, actually we have the game status here. Um, so we then we gotta um, add it to the collision detect team. Oh, dang it. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I think I'm gonna end it here for now because it does look like require more time, and my hour is up. So I'll just leave it to it next time. So yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.